Hello all, I am Suprit and this is Srinidhi and today we are going to show you how to use the Cadence tool for the layouts and semantics. First, let's start and do a new library. Now we are opening the Cadence tool. Let's open the virtue so. The virtue so is opening. Now, go to file, new, library, type the name of your library, and select reference existing technology libraries, and, select, and press apply. This is already exist. Now we are going to import in the GPTK 180. Now check if your library is created. Library manager. There you have your library. Now let's start with the schematic. First we'll be doing the schematic of NAND. Open new cell view use the library which you created now give the cell name and and make sure that the view and type is schematic and open it schematically mm -hmm. press ok ok now here we can place the components and build a schematic this icon here is used to draw the component or you can use I to initiate a component. Browse and here go to GPDK 180 and select NMOS or PMOS which you want to draw. Select NMOS and select symbol. This draws a four terminal NMOS. Make sure that you have four terminal NMOS. Place it where you want place as in schematic press escape draw on more on my PMOS control and R to rotate press it back now we have to flip it Now you have to flip so that the arrow mark, the source, goes to the VDD that is upside. Flip, flip vertically, and you have the source pointing towards the VDD that is upside. Okay, now we have done the circuit. Let's put up the pins. Select as input. The direction should be input, and mention the inputs which you want to place. VDD, VSS. A and B. Place the pin VDD. Down goes to VSS. And for the left, we have A and B. Okay, now press P again and make sure the direction is output. You have your pin output pin layout. Press enter and place the pin. 
Now press W to select wire. Unconnect the pins to the circuit. Make sure that the substrate is connected to the source. Connect the output from in between the N block and the P block. Again here connecting the substrate to the source. Make sure that the substrate of both the NMOS are connected to the ground and not to their source. And this completes your schematic. Inputting. You have not connected the input, so it says floating input or output. So make sure that you have connected all the inputs to the pins respectively. Now this schematic is done. Save a schematic. Now we are found. All right. Now this completes your schematic. Now we have completed our schematic. Let's make create a symbol. Go to create from cell view from cell view and make sure that it says symbol schematic symbol press ok arrange the pins in the schematic fashion left pins are A and B right pin is V out top pin is VDD bottom pin is VSS press ok now you get the symbol press and delete to remove the unwanted boxes to name your symbol and place it here you have a symbol save the symbol and the symbol is ready to use now to create a test circuit go to file new cell view here give the name make sure that the library is ASDF and may give a new name for the cell which is relevant to the NAND schematic and press ok now initiate the symbol which you have created go to browse go to your library and there you have NAND, schem NAND schematic select the symbol And then place your symbol now drawing the supplies from the analog library browse analog library select v pulse select vdc to give the dc supplies for the vss and vdd specify the magnitude of the voltage 1.8 volts to 2 volts then place the supply next press i again to draw the components select v pulse to give in the pulse input to a and b place two v pulse source press escape and draw the ground and supply to wherever necessary make sure that the supplies are also grounded now press W and connect the wires to the supplies negative to ground and connect A and B and V to the V pulse press escape now specify the magnitudes set voltage 1 as 0 volts and voltage 2 or 1.8 or 2 volts set the time period 
you know seconds just give 40 and it will take the seconds given it automatically and set the pulse width to half in the period okay press enter and select the second source do the same but reduce the period to half or double say 80 nanoseconds and pulse width is 40 nanoseconds now to see the output we have to draw a pin select output and name it as V out place the pin and connect it to the V out now we have your schematic save no errors test schematic is ready to check the test schematic go to launch ADEL say yes now make sure that this session now send go to setup model libraries and make sure that the GPDK 180 is the only library which is ticked and go to analysis choose here choose the transient analysis to plot the time versus the amplitude select a st stop time of 200 nano keep the accuracy default as moderate and press ok you can check it here and now go to the outputs to be plotted select on design select the two inputs A and B and the output and go back to the ADEL save the plots and press run simulating the output and you get the output press this symbol to split all the strips and there you have the NAND output you can verify it using the truth table it is low for one and one only and high for the rest of the cases and hence the truth table can be verified now to create the layout open the schematic which you have created earlier select your library and the schematic select schematic double click on it and it will open your schematic now here is your schematic and to draw the layout go to launch layout excel make sure it is create new and the configuration is automatic press ok name your schematic and make sure that the view and type is layout press ok say ok and you will get the layout background layout window and here now you have to draw the inputs draw the elements from the schematics so go to connectivity general generate all from source all the instances io pins and pr boundaries have to be imported make sure that the minimum separation is 0.12 and select ok now there you have the layout press shift plus f to see the internal architecture of the layout okay, when you press shift f you will see the internal architecture of the mosfets now to extend the pr boundary press s select the edge just click once and leave it where you want to extend the boundary Similarly for the side boundary Press F to zoom back to the original size Now you can see the connections here which is indicated by the orange lines now to draw the 
to see the connections go to the na window assistance and navigator here this pops up your navigator window and select select a and here you can see the connections to where the a is connected a pin using this you can wire the, your layout accordingly now let's see how to place the pins go to place pin placements and say place as in schematic it automatically sets to left right bottom and select the vdd select h rail and you can see the whole top player become the vdd <coughs> similarly for the vss h rail and this makes the bottom layer as vss and vdd now make sure that there is enough space to create the vias move the mosfets inside or extend the pr boundary once you select uh, some mosfets you can see the connection here you can see that the connections have been crossed so what you can do is select the mos and you must rotate it i go to here and see horizontally and select the mosfet which one to flip now you can see that it has been flipped and the connections are easily recognizable once you have rotated you will get to know the connections by two or three methods one is by selecting the components and dragging them here you can see the connections marked by the orange lines that's one way or you can go to the navigator window and select a it will show the connections to the a terminal and then select b you can see the b pin is highlighted with the connections similarly for the nets and the vdd and vss and so on okay now let's start the connections first we have to connect a in this fashion press p to draw the wires select the wire from where you want to draw and now we are going to place the wire from metal to poly so what we have to do is draw a via so right click and go to via down to and select poly you will get the via place the via and then you will get the poly here you can see that the width of the drawn poly is greater than the gate poly so what you can do is instead of drawing from the metal press escape and draw it from the gate press p and draw it from the gate here and then right click again it is via up to metal since you are running from poly to metal it is via up to metal place the poly and drag it and connect it zoom it in to make sure that the pin and the metal is in line zoom it in sure that the metal is fully overlapped with the metal line pin
If you cannot move the pin, draw the metal layer which you have drawn and draw it from the pin and onto the poly. Like so. Now you have the connection. Zoom back out. Once you have connected, zoom back out and then draw the other connection. Select from the poly. for the A pin. So the A pin is completely connected to the inmost and pinmost. So now let's do the P and B pin. Make sure that the PMOS and the inmost are in line so that you can attach the PMOS and the inmost gate without any misalignment. So now the position of your one mouse is fixed. So what you can do is draw from one to a, one end to an end and place it. Here you can see the misalignment. So zoom in, select the P mouse and move it sideways. So now the terminals are matched and you have to connect it from poly to pin B. Zoom in. Select from metal. Right click. We are down to poly. Place the via and draw the via to the poly. Now the connections for the A and the B are finished. Now let's connect the VDD. To place the VDD, we need to have to connect the source of the PMOS to the VDD, you need to have a VIA. So press O or go to create VIA, or you can just press O. And here, select to M1, comma N well. Okay, hide and place it touching the. PMOS <coughs> repeat the same for the other PMOS now we have aligned the envelope to the PMOS properly similarly for this Select the NL. And align it properly. So now we have aligned the NL via and the PMOS. So zoom back and connect the source to the VD through the via. Press P, select the source, select the source and draw to VDD through the M1 to M well me via place it to VDD. Similarly for the second PMOS. now we have done the VDD connections why we use this via is we have to connect the substrate to the source of the PMOS so we draw the via which acts as an intermediate stage from substrate to the source and now similarly for the NMOS we have to connect N via from M1 to P sub so that you can 
short the substrate of nmos to the source so go to create or just press o select via make sure that you have selected m1 to piece up now play the range of this envelope to piece up via is once you have selected the um, via from envelope to piece up make sure that the via is in between the two nmos so that the distance covered 10 micrometer is within range of the two PMOS, nmos now place it the wire metal from via to the vss and now connect the source and drain of the nmos and pmos respectively go to the navigator and select nets so you can see the connections of the nets so you must connect the right side of envel to the VDD VSS and then the drain should be connected to the source of the above envel NMOS way out connection now the connections of the envel NMOS is done and then now we have to connect the drain of both the PMOS uh, to the drain of NMOS connected to PMOS and then this terminal has to be connected to the like this and now we have to take the output from the shorted metal wires so this makes our connections we'll zoom out so this will be your final layout Once you have completed the connections in the layout, you have to make sure that the layout is right. So we have to run some tests. One is called the DRC, which is called as the design rule check. It makes sure that the connections ensure the lambda rules, which is the minimum spacing between the metals, poly, wells, and all these. And the other is the LVS, which means the layout versus schematic. It checks for the difference in layout and schematic. It makes sure that the connections are in proper arrangement. Now, to run the checks, go to Ashura Technology. If this is not found, click on the three dots and make sure. I click on the click on the library. And keep clicking until you find CAD. Once you find the CAD, double click, go to Foundry, Analog, 180 nanometer, and here select the Ashura Tech Library. Once you get the library, press Apply and click OK. Now that you have updated the library, go to Run DRC. Here, make sure that the technology is GPD K180 and the rule set is default. And the rule file, the location of the file is set to which location you had set previously. Click on apply. OK. Yes. And it will start text checking for the DRC. Now that the DRC is finished, if to view the results, press OK. And here you can see that we have an DRC error. Metal to metal spacing must be greater than 0.3. Click on the error and press the side arrow mark. Minimize it. And the error will be highlighting. So correct the error. Make sure that the distance is more than 0.3 nanometer. Delete, delete the poly, move the via or delete the metal, press P, draw from the pin, no 
right click we are down to poly place the VR at a distance and connect it to the poly now that you have corrected the error let's run the DRC check again go to Ashura run DRC ok and it says you have to save this command save the layout before running the DRC just save it press ok start the DRC check to view the DRC, press OK. No DRC errors found. So this means that the design rule check is complete, and there are no errors according to the design rules or the lambda rules. Now to test for the LVS, go to Ashura, run LVS. And here, make sure that the technology is GPT K180. Rule set is default, and the extract file is as shown here and then press ok yes ok and your LVS has started and you can see here you can view the log file by clicking the watch log file here we will show the log file and now we can see that there are zero errors LVS check is complete and there are zero errors and here you can see that the schematic and layout has, is matched. Now you have completed the LVS and DRC check. You are Once you have completed the DRC and LVS, the layout is right. And to run the QRC, go to Ashura and run QRC. Here, make sure that the technology is GPTQ180, rule set is default. And if the setup directory is not set, go to browse go back and select CAD foundry analog 180 nanometer PV Ashura and RCX press ok and make sure that the output is extracted view so we will get the cell view and the view type as AV extracted and make sure that the enable cell view check is ticked and go to extraction select the extraction type as RC and the reference node as G and D and a exclamatory mark press ok yes watch the log file once the QR AV extract QRC is done you will have the AV extracted view as well along with you can see the parasitics the P capacitance of 23 P resistors of 22 we have used 2 NMOS, 2 PMOS so that will be your schema layouts, parasitics, AV extracted and to view the AV extracted go to library manager select your library select your schematic and here you can see the AV extracted view double click on it to open the AV extracted view Once you have generated the QRCs, now you will have to include the parasitics into the test and test the um, schematic. So to do that, you have to generate a configuration file onto the test schematic. So to do that, after the AV extracted view, go to file, library manager, your library library name and make sure that the AV extracted is available and here now we can see that there is only test schematic and not the configuration schematic so to do so to do the configuration file go to file new cell view here make sure that it is config the type is config and make sure that the name is the same as the test schematics name NAND test NAND test and press ok here you will get the configuration details first go to use template make sure that the name is spectre and you will get the path automatically press apply ok and here you have the global binding it is bind to spectre and make sure that the view is schematic press ok 
and then you will have the configuration details now we get the hierarchy editor window here go to the tree view select your schematic folder right click and select the set instance view to AV extracted or schematic if you select the schematic it will be the normal schematic and if you select the AV extracted it will include the parasitics into the test schematic and then here recompute in hierarchy just make sure that the configuration file is ticked and press ok and save it now minimize the hierarchy editor window and there you will get the config file double click on the config file and make sure that it is yes for both the ticks press ok and you will get the new test schematic which includes the parasitics to make sure that you are running the AV extracted right click on the symbol go to descendant edit or read and here you can see the view is AV extracted so you can run the tests on the AV extracted like the previous test circuit go to ADEL and then set the setup go to setup library manager and make sure that is only one GPDK 180 and go to analysis choose transient analysis give the appropriate stop time give set it as moderate and press ok update it in your analysis go to outputs to be plotted select on design select the plots whichever you want to plot and go back to the aerial window save the plot and run the <coughs> AEL so now we have got the output of AV extracted view and you can measure the rise time fall time for the schematic as well as the AV extracted in the same order to measure the rise time and fall time go to tools calculator I will get this window clear the buffers clear the buffers and now select the input which you uh, select the signal which you want to measure the measure its fall time and rise time go to special functions and select rise time or fall time once you have selected the rise time, you will get some parameters. Select the initial value as 0 or just press the default and set the initial value as 0. Final value is 1.8 volts and come down. And make sure that the percentage low is 10%. 10 and the percentage high is 90 and uh, to select the signal minimize the you have to select the signal here so to select the signal minimize the window select the output for, from which you want to extract the rest time and fall time go to the calculator you don't close my car you have to close the calculator after clearing the buffer and uh, go to the uh, output select the signal which you want to measure and then go to tools calculator and then you will have the signal copy the signal as usual and paste it in the signal in the rest time parameter and press apply when you press apply it will get the it will set the parameters and if when you press the evaluate button you will get the rise time 69.49 into 10 power minus 12 seconds and then similarly to measure the fall time 
and go to special functions again select fall time set the parameters accordingly initial value will be 1.8 and the final value is 0 since the signal is falling to 0 and paste the signal again and then press apply and it is set and then when you evaluate you can see that the fall time is 78.09 to 10 power minus 12 seconds that is how you measure the fall time and the rise time of the AV extracted as well as the schematic